Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. Well, after the impressive Matthew O'Toole had finished his statement and his rounds of questions at the sub cross party select committee meeting on the Protocol of Ireland, I thought that this was a, going to be a tough act to follow and quite possibly could, very easily could go downhill from here. I suppose I'm sure there's a song in there somewhere. But but next up was uh, Sasha Eastwood from the Alliance Party. And to say I was mightily impressed again was an understatement. And what struck me more was how calm, cool, and didn't look out of place in an environment of seasoned politicians. And I use that very, very lightly when it comes to our Lord, only a madman is talking about leaving the single market, Hannon but also a calm, composed way. This impressive politician dissected the fallout of Brexit. Take a bow, young lady. Good afternoon, and welcome back to this public meeting of the subcommittee on the uh, protocol on Ireland and Northern Ireland. And we now continue uh, our engagement with the five largest political parties in the Northern Ireland Assembly after the Assembly elections on 5th of May. Our second witness today is Saoirse Eastwood, uh, Alliance Party MLA for Lagan Valley. You are extremely welcome and we very much look forward to hearing the evidence you will, uh, you will give us. Today's meeting is being broadcast and a verbatim transcript will be taken for subsequent publication, which will be sent to you to check for accuracy. And I should refer to the list of members' interests as published on the committee's uh, website. Uh, and perhaps I could just begin by asking if you could set out the Alliance Party's overall position in relation to the protocol, and then we'll move on to other questions. Thank you very much, Lord Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yes, very, that's very okay. clear. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to be with the committee again um, and to give evidence today, Lord Chair. So if I may, I might make a few opening remarks in terms of our Alliance Party position on where we are now. I think it is important to establish at the start that what we are discussing today and what we are seeing reflected in our politics across and between these islands is the fallout of Brexit. At the outset, and when David Cameron made clear his intention to hold, in his words, an in-out referendum, Alliance made it clear from the start our opposition to it, precisely for reasons that we have now sadly seen borne out in real time. Instability in our politics in Northern Ireland, impacts on people's opportunities, impacts on business and even people leaving and going elsewhere. But it has also had a profoundly destabilising impact on politics within GB, the effects of which are still being felt. In the intervening years, post-2016 to now, we have had numerous iterations of what a Brexit may or may not look like. The Theresa May softer Brexit that envisaged all of the UK in the single market, which was roundly rejected by Brexiteers and indeed the harder elements within primarily the Conservative Party, eventually landing on the hard Brexit favoured by Johnson, which seemed to form a core pillar in his 2019 election campaign. And if I may, I would like to draw a conclusion here before we move on. It is not without foundation to suggest the level to which Brexit as an ongoing campaign issue and the UK government approach to Brexit and the protocol are intertwined. That is to say, my lords, that there have been a number of occasions where it has felt that the issues around Brexit and Northern Ireland have been seemingly co-opted into a wider debate by those who would wish to make a wider political point, often not being particularly well informed or even well acquainted with Northern Ireland, the place that is my home and is our number one priority. Over the last number of years, Alliance have campaigned on the basis that we rejected and opposed Brexit, as we didn't want to see borders or barriers anywhere on or between these islands. Indeed, I do wonder if those who so enthusiastically championed a hard Brexit do often reflect on the outcome of where that has arguably taken us. It is clear that the protocol exists as a means to manage the outworkings of a hard Brexit and what that entails in practical terms. We would not have one without the other, and that is a point that bears repeating. And Matthew O'Toole practically said the same thing, didn't he? If uh, we didn't have Brexit, we wouldn't need the protocol. However, 
Since January 2021, Alliance have been proactive in seeking to put forward solutions. We could perhaps best characterize our approach as that of protocol pragmatists or protocol realists. We were the first proponents of a comprehensive veterinary agreement, something that we still believe has most value. But most importantly, we are unwavering in our commitment to doing what is right by everyone in Northern Ireland. Walking away from engagement will not work. It simply entrenches positions and unilateral action is deeply unhelpful. If you listen to the business community, they are clear that anything other than a negotiated outcome is suboptimal, and we agree. Now is the time for clarity, honesty, and a collegiate approach, not simply speaking to a base in isolation. Good luck with that, unfortunately. Not with this extreme Brexit Tory government, but totally agree. The people of Northern Ireland, and indeed right across the UK, are in the grip of a cost of living crisis and a health service crisis, and that is reflected in their priorities. Where there are issues with the protocol, we have been and will continue to be proactive and solution focused. But we must also recognise that people have various and other important issues. We often said that in the great referendum debate of 2016, <coughs> in the battle of logic and emotion, emotion will often win out. And sometimes, my lords, it is very difficult and complex to actually get to the nub of the issue. That is to say, are we talking simply in economic terms or in emotional terms? Ultimately, it is a mix of both. And it could be argued that one is much more easier handled than another. Alliance are bridge builders. That is who we are. Indeed, that is our USP. We represent unionist, nationalist, and people like myself who are neither of those things and unaligned. We believe that that gives us a unique position, not just in terms of this debate, but wider issues within Northern Ireland. And we have most recently seen our most successful election to date, returning 17 Alliance MLAs. We are there to play our part. And as I have said, our priority is working for everyone in Northern Ireland. And I do look forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much, Lord Chair. Thank you very much indeed for that. I wasn't Sasha amazing for someone so young. I have to admit, I had never heard of that name before. It's quite a beautiful name, actually. I wonder if it's prominent in Ireland. I don't know. I'm sure people who from Ireland will probably say, no, it ain't really. Oh, yes, it is. But not only beautiful name, but what also struck me about her was she was polite, calm, and very clear and concise in her answers as well. Showed everyone who asked her questions the respect they deserved. And even when Lord only fool is talking about leaving the single market, Hannon didn't give her the respect back after she had finished with his drivel about something on the lines of if she was negotiating with the evil overlords of the EU in his eyes, what would she want them to do, basically? You know, conveniently forgetting that it's this numbnuts of a country that want to leave and are being bad faith actors, you know. Well, when Sasha had finished and the chair had introduced whoever next going to ask her a question, Lord, only a fool is leaving the single market. And very nonchalantly to the, to the person next to him, muttered under his breath, you notice she didn't answer the question. What a tit. But with Sasha not in the room, doing it virtually, chances are she probably didn't hear him. But, but I did. And, if, and as far as I can tell, if he'd have said that while Matthew O'Toole was in the room, I have no doubt he would have taken our Lord, only a madman is talking about leaving the single market hand and to task over his disrespectful remark. That I have no doubt about. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that complete bell tap, are we? We're here to talk about this impressive, clearly very bright and wonderful politician. Oh, I have to say, when in the company of seasoned politicians, as I've said again, and I use the term very loosely for our Lord, only a madman is talking about leaving the single market, and then Sasha Reeswood didn't look out of place at all. None of that Amory Trevelyan pen clicking, none of Bods Johnson blustering, none of that bumbling, fumbling, 
like our James not so cleverly and certainly on a, not an ounce of uh, Tom Purr's glove strop either. <laughs> yeah, it was very painful. But yeah, like I said, you know, this is quite therapeutic to watch. And it was the same with um, Matthew O'Toole and this impressive young lady. It was a joy to watch. You know, you know when you enjoy watching something and you... S- and the time just flies by. And when it finishes, you think, really? That... How, where did that time go? Because, like I said, clear, concise, and uh, very impressive. But anyway, as you can say, I could carry on till the cows come on with these impressive individuals. But I can, I know you got you poor guys have got lives to live in now, so I shall leave the video here. And until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and uh, you know take care.